Hey everyone, uh, this is Dragonstar and today I'm gonna be showing you guys my guide to playing Empire Wars. So, uh, I'll be showing you three openings. The first one being the Scouts, the second one being the Archers and the last one being the Eagle Rush. And my suggestions for the maps and a couple of things to keep in mind when playing against any of these situations. So, let's go for a standard map, the one which is most common in Empire Wars is going to be runestones and my suggestion for opening scout civilizations if you plan to play scouts are going to be the three as follows the first one is franks if you want to play scouts knights the second one is like tatars if they can go for uh, scouts into archers it has a really good transition you can do it with pretty much any civilization to be fair and the last one on the list that I would like to point you guys to is Magyar. So my top three picks for if you want to go scouts in an Empire War setting. Uh, these are the three civilizations I would suggest the most. And since we are going to pick like one of the best ones, I'll be showing you a way of doing scouts into knights with full walls. And depending on what the opponent is going, you can make the decision of making a counter unit. So let's just load into uh, the game and I'll be starting off with a couple of basics in the opening. So you start with 28 villages uh, and the first thing you are like going to do is keeping the villages under your town center and tasking them to the sheep, queuing up two villages that allows you to spend 100 food and having a bank of 100 food in reserve. What you're going to be doing with that rest of 100 food will depend on what the enemy is also going for. But in this case, we are going to be assuming that uh, we'll have a little bit of a uh, leeway on what we want to do. So let's start the game, pick up the rest of our sheep, remove these villages from gold and send them to berries so that we have eight on berries. Since we are going for scouts, we're going to be dropping a stable and we're gonna be waiting a little bit for our wood to be collected so that we can afford the wood upgrade making a house at the same time all the villages that are being produced will stay under the town center till you have 20 on food and what i want you guys to do in the opening is make a circle around your base to see how your base looks like and complete your walls so like just put like three or four villages every time you find like a uh, a wood line to the another wood line just make a wall and complete the wall you have of course as soon as your stable is up make the scouts add spearmen if you need them uh, initial spearmen against the first scout will be pretty useful but if you can save that little bit of food it's also going to be fine so the number of scouts that you would typically need is something like five to six i would not recommend making more than that and you want to make sure you are walled as quickly as you possibly can with the villages and as soon as i have three scouts on the field i'm gonna be moving out of course meanwhile all this time i've been watching out for any scouts of my opponent and as soon as i have 20 on food i'll be shifting all the new villages to gold so that i can click up going to start my opponent it's typically a little later but around this time like you are all fully walled and you want to hit his resources so you can start killing a bunch of his villages the villages which are completed under the town center can go to wood and they can drop farms once the wood has basically run out whenever you have 60 wood you are going to be spending it on making a farm and the number of farms you need is around 15 before you think about clicking up i have four on gold 
and 4 on gold will allow me to get to that 200 gold as quick like as fast as I can and the number of farms I need is 15 so I need one more and after that all the villagers can go to gold till I have enough to click up since my opponent will be making a lot of spearmen I also have to make sure I am either transitioning into skirmisher if my opponent is making scouts himself uh, this is the perfect scenario if like your scout uh, if your opponent is making like an archer transition you have to go for skirmishes to buy yourself time so that your knights can come into the play so adding an archery range around this time or a little bit before that would be viable just using these six scouts not more than that like anything more you'll be delaying your uptime by quite a bit all the villagers once the berries are over you're gonna be dropping four more farms and the rest of the villagers can be distributed to gold and world you need eight on gold minimum before we like for two stables you need eight on gold and rest of the villagers can stay on uh, food and wood having like a little bit more than you need on wood will allow you to make a uh, lot of town centers monasteries and depending on the situation like it, it like um, allows you to have a lot of flexibility in your economy so 28 villages is what we start out with in the opening in terms of how much resources and the farm numbers you need will be more beneficial for you if you can keep the same amount of farmers and keep the same amount of wood and gold villages this will be a much more useful opening in a, as a pocket player rather than a flank uh, or a 1v1 scenario this is like more likely to help you in a team game scenario this opening and as soon as we're up we're gonna be getting like the armor for our cavalry or attack if you do want to go for that and dropping two town centers immediately once we can afford it making knights getting the uh, plus two armor and that concludes what you have to do so now you can add a monastery and play it like normal like the build basically finishes to this point this is your scouts into knights opening let's x out of the game and i'll be showing you guys uh the other variations of this um like the one which is more common can be like uh magia so there's two version of the scout opening i'll be going for magia's instead of tatas but tatas is also pretty viable in most scenarios so let's go for real spins again it's more of a arabia mirror again making a circle around my town center adding a stable sending these villages to berries putting my sheep back under my town center gonna make a circle and sometimes you have the deer which you should take but i am just for demonstrating the build i'm gonna be not going to go for those so the main difference of even opening scouts in empire war is you are not going to go for um, you're not going to go for the farm upgrade so the reasoning behind that is the farm upgrade takes a lot longer to pay off since you already start in feudal age so just gonna keep making scouts and doing the same thing where like i'm going for the big wall maybe not that big just gonna make maybe a circle around this scout i can go scout my opponent Still going for that 20 on food sound. I can shift these two villages back to gold since I'm getting close to that 20 on food sound that I would need. 
also my scouts are cheaper so this is like much easy easily sustainable for a civilization like magyars going opening scouts and since I have 20 on food now, you need to get it. 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 I'll use my scouts to attack. And the next building that I'm going to be adding is an archery range so that I can start making arches. All the new villages are just going to go for gold till I can click up. Gonna keep harassing our opponent. And by the end of this, you most of the time always want to have 12 one word. 12 one word will allow you to bank a lot of uh, word which you will need for town centers and all the other stuff. Like having a little bit over 12 is also fine because I'm already meeting most of my food and gold requirements it can be one or two above the normal like if your villagers have to walk a lot and then you can just put them near the nearest resources since my keeps are finished I'm not gonna go for fletching I'm just like up Jó napot, fát vágok. Igen, gyűjtögetek, fát vágok. So I'm gonna keep using my scouts and once I'm up, I'll be turning my archers into crossbows. The farmer count is pretty low. The so number of farms I would recommend you guys get is 30 before you reach castle age. So after the berries are done, three of those villages can go to farm, the rest of them can go to wood. Got my gold upgrade, farm upgrade on the way of going up. Again. Still making archers while I'm advancing to the next stage. Once I'm up, I'm gonna be dropping my town centers or going for ballistics depending on what is required. If your opponent is really far away or you want to protect a bunch of your resources, you can make that decision yourself. I'm the one like who likes to go for a little bit of a boat. So I'm gonna be dropping a town center and getting the ballistics at the same time. Going for crossbow, board can, and once I'm able to afford the wheelbarrow upgrade, that is what also I'm going to go for. And since I'm only playing two ranges, nothing special, I'm gonna be removing a few villages on gold so that I only have eight on gold. I added a little bit more than eight uh, or like more than eight because I want to make sure I can afford all my upgrades like ballistics, board can and crossbow. They are pretty expensive so adding a little bit more for the short while will allow me to upgrade and get them. And this is how I can get to the crossbows. And once I have ballistic, uh, that is what I'm like going to be using to pick off even more villages. Adding a third town center, going for food, and all I all you have to do is just keep making farms so that you can sustain three of your town centers. Adding the third town center a little bit later after getting ballistics in university is usually something I like to go for when I'm playing crossbow after opening scouts. And I'm gonna be just microing my archers and picking off my opponent's villages. So this is like the second variation of opening scouts that uh, you're using to transition into archers. So this is the second variation. 
this was what concluded as the uh, scout opening in Empire Wars. The second variation where you can open straight arches. Uh, my top three civilizations that I would recommend you guys is either Vikings. The second one is May Mayans and the last one is Britons. Uh, all three of these civilizations are pretty good. Like Ethiopians can be a really good contender in this part. Uh, but I am going to be rating Vikings as the highest pick since you already get Bilvaro research. The economy is really strong. Mayan has a pretty strong army composition where they can play eagles, crossbows and uh, have a lot of flexibility in that regard. And Britons as faster working archery ranges, pretty cheap town centers, so it, it like is really comfortable playing them on the Empire War setting. Ethiopian is the same thing. You don't get the 100 food and gold with Ethiopians, but that is not an issue for you since you have the faster working, uh, faster firing archers. And once you re reach Castle Age, the bonus of extra food and gold starts kicking in. So it becomes really, really useful to play Ethiopians. Ethiopians also have a lot of counters to other serves that you might be seeing. So my top pick for like archers is going to be Vikings. As always, Vikings, you can open straight archers. And the build will be slightly different. It has almost the same build, but slightly different. We're going to be opening Vikings. And I'm going to make a pause. So the thing we were doing where we were yeah. removing gold in the early stages of the game, we're not going to be doing that. Win. We're going to leave these four villages on gold, which we already start with 100 gold. That will allow us to have um, constant queue of production. I would have added one more villager on gold if I was not Vikings and if I wanted a little bit more secure production. In, in the archer opening, the opening will be a lot more different because again, I'm gonna go for like the same way I'm going to be opening as I would do with any other one. But I'm gonna be adding a spearman almost immediately because I wanna protect my villages. The mobility with my scouts allows me to have a better protection of the villages which I'm using to wall. But since I'm not opening uh, scouts, I'm gonna be making a spear. Adding an archer. Already added the spearman. All the new villages that you're gonna be making after your like after the initial start. Well, it is the initial start. All of them are gonna go on berries till you have eight on berries again. Getting wood upgrade, of course, oh. after the spearman. Oh. I'm gonna be using the archers and spearmen to protect my wallers. I'm gonna keep mounting my archers, add more spearmen if you need it. And once my eight villages and berries are like on it, I'm gonna be shifting the villages again to food. And the number of uh, villages I want on food is 18. Before I think about adding my villages somewhere else. I'm gonna be replacing the villagers who are finishing the sheep. And the farmers I would want is 8 farmers. And since I have 8 farms now, I'm also gonna get fletching. If, like, you can skip fletching and go for a faster uptime if you do need, like, if you don't need it. Ooh. And this is around the time after your fully walled that you're going to be moving out with your archers and spearmen. It's pretty late, but that is what you have to do with archers. You're gonna be just using them to protect your base. Once your very like your sheep have run out, you're gonna be adding the second range. I'm not gonna move out otherwise, like like you can move out and reach your enemy's base under five minutes. 
queen. Uh, with like three archers and one spearman, you can immediately move out if your opponent is going for um, scout. This is like a pure scout versus scout variation. If you are not versus a scout, serve, I would recommend not making that second spearman. And 10 on gold, that is all we need. After this villager, I should be able to click off. Yeah. That was for a sec, but that's all normal. And as soon as you reach up to the next age, like you're gonna be adding town centers, or you're going to be going for ballistics. Just reinforce these walls with like houses and make sure you don't let your enemy come in. Get upgrades on your economy, like farm upgrade, gold upgrade for your gold villages. And having 10 on gold is like the same thing. I'm having a little bit more on gold so that I can afford the upgrade. And once my berries have run out, I'm gonna be using the farm upgrade and seeding a little bit more farm. And I want to go for 12 farms this time around instead of 13. 13 is like more of a normal civilization route. With um, with Vikings, you can get away with adding a little bit less. This allows you to have like a lot more bank of resources once you reach the next stage. Taking deer is always uh, dependent on where they spawn. My advice for you guys is take them if they are secure. Like if you can have like a couple of deers inside your walls, go for them with like four or three villages and long distance them. You don't need to have like a mill next to it. And I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna be adding a town center, going for uh, Bodkin and crossbow. And of course, just going for the word like ballistics behind it. Oh. These 12 farms will allow my both of my town centers to be working and I'm gonna, not going to be making any more archers till I have enough wood for ballistics which is like 300 wood and by the time I reach my opponent's base with crossbows I'll have ballistics and town center to produce my economy at the same time. So from this point on it's the same follow up where you're gonna be getting ballistics and just making sure your town centers are working. New villages also go in word. Start passively making a, a couple of farms so that you can sustain the food production of the third town center. Yeah. Removing these villages from gold so that I only have 8 on gold which will allow me to have like a constant um, arch or 2 range archery production. Uh, I've added my third town center and have ballistics on my crossbows. Pick up, uh, make a siege workshop, pick up relics by making a monastery. And that's basically the opening part of it. Like you, now it just depends on what you want to do. If your opponent is going for heavy push on you, you can start mining stones so that you can make a castle and defend against it. And that's the Viking build. So this is like the straight archer build. This is more of a 1v1 opening. Uh, team game opening might look a little bit different. Uh, on team game, we want a little bit more production. We're not relying that much on um, just playing uh economy and walling we want to control the map and make sure we are walled and like don't lose control against two armies at once where uh, one of the pocket is going scouts the other one is going like arches in that scenario the opening will pretty much almost Manda. look similar but the difference will be in the Manda. amount of buildings that you're going to be making 
Freddy. Uh, since we are starting off, uh, uh, starting this off with one range as usual, getting the wood upgrade after that, and making sure we are completely walling our map again. The initial scouting Man, around my over. town center so that Shh. it allows me to know Holden. what my walls will look like. Freedom. Yay, correct. Chop, chop. Freedom. Man, datum. Bolden, bolden, bolden. Bolden, bolden. And the reason I'm adding a little bit more on gold. Uh, seven to be exact is because I'm going to be adding a second range as well. So that is basically the difference in a team game scenario and a 1v1 scenario. We're going to be prioritizing getting a second range instead of trying to click up and that way we are having like the production a little bit more on the numbers side. We're gonna be having a lot more uh, archer numbers. Bolden, 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 Bolden. Yay, ready. Gather her. Bolden, Bolden, Bolden. Getting flexing. Greeting, Bolden, and Dartum. Greeting. Yay. Ready. Again, Man we are Dartum. having that eight on. Yadera, Bolden. Um, ready. eight on Berry count. Completing our walls. Yay. Man, Dartum. Bolden, Bolden. Ready. Bolden, 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 Bolden. Man, Dartum, ready. Greeting. Having the initial seven on gold will allow you to get a good bank of gold, which will let you produce uh, the arches. Now I'm adding the eight on gold because I want to go for a bit more constant production since we are already researching all our upgrades. Moving out with our arches, like you can combine your army with your pocket around this time when your arches are in mass. These villages can Bolden. go back after these villages are done walling. Freddy. Um, yeah, you can send Bolden. them back Bolden. to Bolden. the food eco. And now you're just gonna be making farms till you're able to click up. If you can't afford the farm, just get like all the villages are just gonna go to wood till you can. Ready. Get the far, like armor upgrade if you do really need it. Ready. Still skipping horse color. You don't really need it in feudal age, especially in Empire War setting. Ready. Sure, our archery range is producing archers the entire time. Ready, Bolden. Just need one more farm, and I can click up. Greeting, yes. Chopper. Yay, Chopper. Greeting, Mandarin. Yay, Bolden. Yay, Gatherer. Mandarin. Fourteen farms. Greeting, ready. Man, like around yay. 13 on word. These 8 on berries you can remove like 4 of them and yay. put them on word and 2 of them on gold. Getting armor, gold upgrade, farm upgrade while you're going up to the next stage as always. Yay. Golden. Ready. Man, datum. Ready. Chopper. And the continuation will be pretty much the same. You're gonna be adding a second town center and getting ballistics immediately. That's like usual uh, thing that I would recommend all the new players to go for. Adding a TC before you're like going for army is always going to be dangerous. Like not having ballistics on your army, you're gonna be missing a lot more shots. Our uptime will be slower, but the amount of army you can get out and the amount of pressure you'll be making against your enemy will be much more. Ready. 
Chopper. Yeah. Greater. Chopper. Since you're gonna be combining Ready. your army with your chopper, allies, chopper. rather than playing alone in a team game Yay. scenario. Yay. Mandatum. Yay. Ready. Ditch. Correct. Chopper. Ditch. Chopper. Yay. Greeten. Correct. And oh. artillery, ballistic, crossbow. And getting wheelbarrow Ready. immediately after that. And saving oh. enough wood, not producing any more arts. Like I can produce a little bit more, yeah. but I'm not the going top. to produce them. I removed the villagers 10 on gold so that I only have 8 this time around. And I'm gonna have enough resources yeah. to yeah. basically yeah. even add a third town center soon. Greaten. Which Ready. I can already Hold afford them. it. Hold Since I'm Britain. Yes, and get ballistics at the yes. same time. All you have to do is get Yay. wood upgrade and you're ready to go. Like just keep Yay. making farms and make sure your town centers are working. Keep ready. producing a crossbow after you get ballistics and like, you will Bolden. not Chopper. run into any problems at all. Chopper. Bolden. Using my crossbows against my enemy, combining ready. my army with my Mandatum. allies will always be beneficial in this stage of the game. Yay. Just making sure I can produce the uh, farm. Yay. Bolden. Mandatum. Bolden. Chopper. All the villages that are going to be produced are gonna go to wood. And you're gonna be making farms like 30 till you click up. So that is the end of like the last variation of the last variation of the archer build. So the last one that we are going to go for is of course the eagle opening this is only possible with asics mayans and incas asics being the strongest one out of all of them and the way you play it is by making like immediate second barracks you make it towards your opponent and the like the principle you follow in this one is basically going to be the same thing you add an eagle immediately and from your barracks all the villages that you're going to be making are going to bury again and you want to be walled as quickly as possible so that you can avoid getting pressured but nay, outside, outside, outside. I'm gonna keep making archers. Like, add a spearman if you're against scouts. Outside, outside, but nay, outside, outside, Oh, ha, 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 a little bit more to gold, and we're gonna be outside. Um, outside. Using the market to click up outside, outside. Outside, outside, outside. Gonna use my eagles to protect my villagers. Hasko, oh, but nay. Jay Hasko, oh, Sakuna, Hasko, but nay. Comanche, Jay. I'm gonna keep picking oh, eagles till. Like you have your market up and then on market you can sell all your stone and sell all your wood and buy food till you are able to click up. The new villages are basically just all going to go to gold. But nay. Outside. Jay. Outside. Oh. Outside. 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 Oak. Bantu. Jay. But nay. Outside. Outside. Oak. Sakuna. Can even cancel this villager. But nay. Jay. Hasko. But nay. Jay. Sakuna. I'm up. Oh, Hasko. Jay. Sakuna. But nay. Oh, Sakuna. Jay. Sakuna. 
Batne. Ok. Batne. Che. Sakuna. Gold number. You need around 13 to 14 on gold. Ok. Hasko. We'll be sending this one as well. Sakuna. Ban. At the third barrack. Ban. Ku. Jemio. Batne. And once the village is around done under the town center, we're going to be adding farms with them. Gold upgrade value. Just keep producing eagles and spam them. With the, like even delaying the wood upgrade and the armor would be pretty good in most cases so that you can go up really quickly. We're gonna buy the food for our upgrade. Make sure we are producing eagles the entire time. The first building, I would recommend, like if you're not playing an eagle uh, Aztec mirror, the first building I would recommend is making a monastery immediately. Getting eagle warrior and uh, speed upgrade for our eagle. Pretty important. Getting attacked. Get armor if you're against archers, but. Let's play it a little bit more on the safer side by adding. This will allow you to pick up the relics, adding the monastery and convert the enemy's knight. The new villagers, instead of adding to gold, will all just go to food. You need a very little food, but you do need food for making eagles and villagers at the same time. Especially three barracks constant production. The less you pressure and feudalage, the better, the like faster you can get to castle, the stronger your army is. The other variations you can play this in is by opening arches and then transitioning into this and that goes for basically all the civilization I've shown. So all you have to do is just keep making eagles and whenever you feel comfortable with the amount of military you have you drop a forward siege workshop and you go start going for rams, mangonels and scorpions depending on what your opponent civilization is. So yeah, this is the way I would recommend everyone to play like a mezzo civilization. And you can even kill like his counter units if you have enough numbers, which is something Aztecs is really good with, where they can outmass their opponents pretty easily. And all I'm doing with my monks is looking for relics, Aztecs being really good at using that bonus. They they get extra gold for making stuff. You can start adding economy behind this at this point, depending on the needs. Add mangonels, add mon monks. Like forward barracks is also one of the possibilities that you can go for. So that you can reinforce your numbers much quicker. Outside. And this will be it. This is like my three ways of playing uh, Empire Wars in the current map pool. So let's look at the map and what my recommendations for the openings might look like on each of those maps. Let's go to multiplayer and let's look at the empire war maps i'm gonna be giving like my top civilizations and 
my recommendation of the strategy for each of the maps for activity i would recommend you play arches some like fast archer civilization where brit something like britons tatars comes to mind when i want to play straight archer opening over there and having a lot of bonuses with like hills and stuff will let you have a lot of uh, good games vikings of course being one of the strongest one there as well eruption eruption is something where you fight for the like gold control in the middle and you will rely a lot more on a different sort of play style so on eruption my recommendation for you guys would be like playing berbers or tatars tatars can go for a straight wall into cap cavalry archer since the map is really vulnerable or you can play berbers berbers or indians berbers being one of the really good fast spammy serves where you can make a lot of knights and camels and control the hill in the middle Uh, the third map is frigid lake frigid lake again my recommendation for that will be some scout civilizations which are really good at hitting the opponent in the different area of the map since the farming economy will be really exposed opening scouts on the map will be pretty beneficial for you guys so something like khmer magyars or franks comes to my mind when going for a map like that greenland greenland is a little bit more on a water side of map you have a lot of shallows um uh, my civilization picks for it would be something like saracen italians and byzantines all of them being really uh, strong water serves and have a lot of flexibility lowland again a pretty pretty uh, further away from your opponent sort of map so scout opening can be pretty beneficial where you can hit up hit a lot of spots be walled by the time his archers or something comes and which will allow you to get a lot of bonuses for yourself so civilizations like berbers again come to mind tatars come to mind uh, where you open scouts and then transition into range units if needed uh, with berbers in most of the cases you just add skirmishers till you can buy enough time to get to knights and civilizations like the ones i mentioned before can also come into play marketplace archers and scouts are both viable but depending on what you feel like you can also go for that uh, by the way for all these sieves which i'm recommending you can play scouts and archers with some of the sieve you can also go for just straight up aztecs and keep playing eagle warriors the way i showed you just spamming eagles and making sure you are getting really good trade versus your opponent doing that marketplace is one of the way you where you can play it like that meadow is one of the games where you can play it like that mountain range scouts into cavalry archers comes to my mind with tatars using the hill bonus northern isles italians japanese a uh, lot of serves which have really good water and a lot a lot of fishing potential so italians and japanese and byzantines which have a lot of bonuses for that ring fortress franks are pretty good berbers are pretty good scout into archers will again dominate on the map i would say so myself reunstrans is basically arabia clone all the archers are pretty good on it so that is a little bit of a brief introduction from my side into empire wars and that's how basically i like to play empire wars so leave a leave a comment a like and subscribe and ask me questions i'll be answering most of them regarding any questions that you guys might have uh, in all of the things that you've watched peace